and welcome back. In this video, I'd like to chat with you about the big picture for vSAN, also some of the requirements to actually make it happen in a vSphere environment. And here's the game plan if we're using a virtual storage area network. And what we're going to do is we're going to start off by using three hosts, three ESXi hosts that are in a cluster together. And let's imagine each of these has some disk storage locally attached that they can contribute. You know, like when somebody says, hey, do you have a few bucks? <laughs> well, this is like uh, vSAN is like asking each of the ESXi hosts, hey, do you have a few disks? Now, it's not just any disks that are going to be required if they're going to contribute them. And we'll talk about the, the individual requirements in a moment. But the logic is they all contribute disks. They all have some connectivity. And hopefully we have some pretty high speed connectivity between the ESXi hosts. And what they do out of the disks that they're contributing, they make this virtualized storage area network, the vSAN. So each of these ESXi hosts then see this vSAN as a data store that they can use. And because this virtualized storage area network is reachable and the data store is reachable by all of them, that means that any one of these three ESXi hosts with the VMs that it's supporting, they could use this data store to house and be the home for the VM files. And let's take a look at the minimum requirements for getting vSAN working. First of all, if you want to use it, it also requires a separate license just for vSAN. So if you deploy it, there's initially an eval for a period of time. But if you want to keep using it, there is a license above and beyond the Enterprise Plus license that you're going to need just for the vSAN functionality. Now, that's the licensing part. Now, for the actual disks involved, each ESXi host needs to have at least one SSD or flash drive, a solid state drive that they can contribute into the vSAN. And then they also need to have at least one disk and that one disk can be either a normal hard disk or it can be another solid state drive or flash drive. But at the worst case, at least one of these disks that it's going to be contributing is going to be an or needs to be an SSD or a flash drive. Now you might say, Keith, why why is that? And the reason for that, it's going to use one of the disks, the faster, the SSD one, for caching. And then they'll need at least one or more disks. This is where we can have the, the more traditional hard disk drive come into play and use that drive for the actual storage. So the solid state drive, the SSD or the flash drive, is used for the caching function, and the other one is used for the actual storage of files. And so that means on each ES6i host that's going to be participating and contributing to the vSAN store, they're going to have one SSD drive and at least one other drive, which also could be SSD or it could be a typical or more traditional spinning disk. And that would repeat over here. We need a hard drive for storage and an SSD drive for caching. Same thing over here on ES6i1. It would need a storage drive for capacity. It would also need a drive for caching. And that would be the solid state drive. And down here where it shows a vSAN cluster, the vSAN feature is actually enabled at the cluster level. And then we're going to want to have the ES6i host in that cluster who are participating. They've got the actual drives and the resources that are going to be making up the virtual storage area network. So the most traditional option for setting up a vSAN is to do it in a cluster, which is going to require at least three ESXi hosts to contribute. But there's also an option of a two host flavor for virtual storage area networking. It still requires a third host as a witness. And that's because if there's a failure, <laughs> it's important to know which one failed. And that's the benefit of a witness to help the device that's still online and still working to realize that he's the one that's still online. There's also an option for a stretched cluster vSAN, which is where some of our ES6i hosts are geographically separate over a wide area network. And even with the geography, there's still some requirements for some fairly consistent and fairly high speed connectivity between the devices that are providing the disks that are making up the vSAN data store. And when these ES6i hosts are supporting this vSAN, they are going to be doing so from IP addresses and not just any IP addresses. Those are IP addresses associated with VM kernel adapters. And one other important aspect is with vSAN, we need to check a little box under the properties of that VM kernel adapter that says this VM kernel adapter can also be used for vSAN. And if we don't have at least one VM kernel adapter that's allowed to participate and work with vSAN, <laughs> it will not work. So that's the big picture plan regarding vSAN, virtualized storage area networking, the product from vSphere. And what I'd like to do in the very next video is let's put together our own plan for the vSAN that we're going to deploy, 
We'll lay out what interfaces we're going to use from the VM kernel adapter perspective. We'll lay out what disks we're going to use. We'll set up all the preparations. And then following that, we'll actually implement vSAN. And then at the tail end of this video set, we'll give you a chance to do it yourself in the hands-on lab. All right, so I'll see you in the next video as we lay out our plan for our own vSAN. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.